Hello, Cambria. We're going to take a look at your uh, emphasis hosting, give you a few observations here. Um, nice job uh, organizing and getting everything in there um, just properly. It's very easy to navigate. Uh, hopefully you understand why we were so particular about that. Um, here, you know, we're starting out, um, we'll just jump right in. Um, the, all, the, the main overview stuff I've, I've sort of talked about in general on the, on the other. Um, so I'm going to kind of get more, talk more about specifics about certain photographs of yours and uh, what I'm seeing in terms of your individual tendencies. Um, and if I were to say overall, um, I'm looking at imagery that tends to be somewhat voyeuristic, and I'll explain what that is as we go forward, but um, you've got this kind of push-pull between things that are close and things that are far away. This one being a very good example to start off, it's your image one, but I'm seeing this um, repeated in many of your images, and um, that again, that's a sort of instinct or that's something you've practiced, but it's important to point that out because it's a, a way in which you see that is unique to you, um, is specific to you, you and that you want to recognize those things so you can keep going forward. Um, you have the object that is in focus uh, right up close. You've got this line that's moving you forward. We're learning about the the, um, the phi curve and the uh, golden ratio and all of those things that incorporate those things into it. Um, focus plays a really big part in something like this. And um, I'm wondering if you had perhaps uh, a photograph that, um, whoops, that incorporated um, this tree in focus rather than this. Um, what's going on here is um, you've got the tree here that is really sharp focus and beautiful, lots of texture. But what it's doing to us is it's getting us to look at that and it's very difficult for our eyes to move over to this area. Um, if this tree was what we what was first, this would still be um, a, a, a dense area. Um, because it's it's right up in front and it's large and it's kind of breaking the plane. But our eye would more easily get back here, which then would get us over here a little bit more. So, it's, you know, it, it, it's not just composition, it's depth of focus and all of these things that we can kind of take into consideration when we're making our images. Um, here again, you're using the close to far away. Um, it's telling me something about it, close to far away. Um, Whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, close to far away, you can see these are things that seem to be really interesting to you. This could just be that you are much more attuned to uh, images that are close up. You you much prefer to, to compose, you know, right in front of your face kind of thing. That's something that's really interesting to observe as well. Um, this is a, a, a little departure from that because we don't have anything so close up, uh, but it is much more structural than the others. In other words, you've got things really lined up here in a very particular way, very organized. Lines are going straight. You've got the rule of thirds happening here. It's not quite the phi grid. It's more like the thirds. Um, here as well, you've got things lined up and organized. This kind of structure is really uh, helpful when you have a very busy area, when something is has a lot of um, uh, activity or a lot of um, stuff in the photograph and you're trying to find a way to compose, you're trying to make it easier for the viewer to kind of view and get into and kind of calm it down a little bit. Adding structure like this is, is one of the most effective ways to do it. Um, again, this is quite beautiful. You are now getting back into the close and far away, close and far away, but now you're doing a little bit of both. Something else is added into, into this one, which is extraordinary, beautiful, and I want you to kind of keep paying attention to this, quality of light. This glow and this glow and how it's reflecting in here, you've got the straight line is picking up right off of this. Now that happened, but you had to position yourself just right to get those two lines to look like they're together. Um, had you moved over a little bit more, you might have even been able to get this one to connect to this one, connect to this one. That could have done something even uh, more interesting. But your choice to make this photograph at this time of day is a really important thing and it's quite beautiful. I don't 
don't think it would work the same way if it wasn't. Um, here you're getting into the shadow part of it and you're getting these sort of reflections that are happening. You've got this curve going on, beautiful quality of light yet not washed out. These are excellent. Um, so I would I would really encourage you to keep exploring that part of it as well. Now we're getting close and it seems like, wow, you know, now all you're able, you're, you have to do is get in there really close up to something. And this is really a beautiful photograph, although less structural. Um, you do have some movement here going on with the way that the snow patterns are working, but it's a, a bit less structural. Um, and then we get to the as I see it, which... This one's a little more like you're not exactly sure where to go with it. And I think that a lot of students, um, when they got to that one, were a little bit less um, confident in, in the way that they were going about doing those because you have no rule set. Like as you see it, exactly what is that supposed to mean? Because we want to take away um, all of the other factors. You're meant to be really close um, where there's really no focus. We want it, that to be part of it because we want to break the sort of norm. We want to break what we preconceive as what a photograph has to be in focus of a subject, all of those things, um, you know, a composition that that is predictable and see what we can do with it. It's gonna be about light, it's gonna be a shadow, maybe some color, that kind of thing. It's a really difficult thing to, um, to achieve. It's a very advanced thing to try to achieve, but we gotta go for it sometimes and just kind of practice that and see where, we, where it takes us. That one, more than any of the others, is a test in where your vision is, where you um, sort of feel that your work is supposed to be, um, how you can take something that isn't based on anybody else's work and incorporate your own ideas into, um, into photography or any other medium for that matter. So, you know, keep working on that one. Of of all of them, I think that one's the one that seems like gave you the gave you the most trouble there. But it, overall, I mean, these are beautiful, beautiful photographs. I really look forward to seeing a lot more uh, of your work. Uh, so we will see you in uh, class and um, catch up with you later. All right, bye now.